After exhausting the rest of the internet, you finally found us online. Congratulations. We are Things I Found Online, and we come with news of the outside world. Yes. Yes, it's still there, and it will be there when we get back to it. But for now, let's hunker and bunker together. I'm Jamie Alcroft here with Danny Mann and Bill Filippiak. Standing by our producer, Dina Friedman, and tech team, Thomas Hubble, and Lane McFadden. Our guest is 16-year-old Juliana Postrel. Can a teenager teach Stan Twitter to a bunch of boomers? Good luck. Boy, yeah, really. Well, we're about to find out. Here is our host, Louise Stan Palanker. We see hey. Thank you, Jamie. We are each safely ensconced in our own respective homes. Juliana is my cousin, and she is zooming in from the Bay Area. Welcome, Juliana. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. This is uh, we're we're honored that you're that you're kind of our uh, in-house st- Stan expert, which is a <laughs> expert. Help and, us understand. Uh, we're going to get to you in just a moment, but first, we want to know, Jamie and Danny, what have you found online this week? Stuff. Stop. Yeah. Well, well, the stand thing is is, is pretty fascinating because yeah. uh, uh, I, I uh, Jamie and I both went uh, googling and wikiing, and um, he 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 made the lovely quote about it being good, say the word a portmanteau, which is the word of the week. If you voted for that, give yourself a dollar, um, uh, which derives, I guess, from stalker and fan. Oh, but, portmanteau. Uh, Wait, to find portmanteau is that when two words combine to make a new mass, word? That's right. Sort of a mashup of two two words to make okay. one. And um, but uh, we also discovered that we we. By the way, it's in the Oxford English Dictionary. Stan is in the Oxford English Dictionary as both yes. a verb verb and a noun, and it is attributed to an Eminem album, uh, the math the uh, uh, Marshall Math Mathers uh, album. Right. And it apparently was one of the, uh, St- the Stan song was one of his like signature hits, number one hit all over the world. And it's a song about a crazed fan in which he plays both himself and the crazed fan. The yeah. video apparently is very famous, yada, yada. And m- most people seem to attribute this, this current trend uh, having started with that premise. Well, and- I heard that Uzbekistan is really just a guy who's really into Uzbeka. Ubeka, yeah. Mm-hmm. Kazika? He loves Kazika. Absolutely. And, Af- and Afghanistan is just a bunch of people that are very avid about the big furry dogs. About Afghans. Absolutely. I was going to say, I thought or, or blankets. Blankets, right? Blankets, yeah. Blankets. Big, big blanket fans, yeah. So, Jamie, this week you were going to recommend to our listeners and viewers uh, online games because you've been keeping yourself amused with some online gaming. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't. Um, played any yet but i think actually i think next week on our podcast we should just play games together Why i don't think so journey? there's a whole oh, channel yeah. devoted to that and they do it better it's called it, twitch it's called twitch yeah yep. they do it better but there's also a um a thing called jackbox tv i found and jackbox tv has a lot of links to a lot of really fun games that you can play with other people I thought that was a fast food website. And where do, where do we find Jackbox TV? Jackbox TV is at jackboxTV.com. All right, but I got a list from you where you recommended uh, One Man's Journey. We got One Man's Journey. We got uh, Donut County. Wait, wait, back up. What happens in One Man's Journey? Who is the man and where does he go? Well, I haven't played it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, was I supposed to play all these games before I recommended it? Well, yes. so were you just Googling, oh, games. G- games to play. Now, my son told me that uh, the game Garagoa is really fun, and there you go. Oh. That is, this is uh, probably one of the, the best ones, and uh, it has uniquely imaginative puzzles. It has gorgeously hand-drawn gameplay and a new kind of storytelling. What can I tell you? Are you reading from the description on the in the app store? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someone came prepared for yeah, class. Yeah, ju- just like he was reading from from his screen when he messed up Dean's name. So, yeah. Lane, let me ask you this question: When we talk about these things, can you not currently click on them? 
That's a double negative. You know, he's on it. I, I am know. clicking on it. Yeah, I'm not oh, sure I'm who's just, showing I'm up for. I'm just not but. seeing it because I'm on a different screen because I'm reading my rundown. Quite, quite possibly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm right. sharing the. I'm sharing away. Yeah. Right. I trust <laughs> you. Go, uh, and uh, yeah, let me know. If it's not coming up for anyone. By the way, if I de if I developed a huge following online, I I would I would have a a, a Dan Man stand. <laughs> Yes, you would have a damn man stand. All Just, right, let's continue with that. You do and you, you shall and you do. Uh, and then, you also recommend Donut County. Yeah. And what happens in Donut County? Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, it's <laughs> see. Esposito's Donut County, and it looks like a donut Espo. hole. Phil or Tony? And... <laughs> Uh, Lane's kind of scrolling here. Okay. Um, it looks real simple. I mean, that's what I like when I see the graphics for a video game. <laughs> it's really simple. Okay, that's my kind of game. Where do you find X's and O's? He's clicked on Donut County. So, Jamie, I need to ask you a really personal question. Did uh -oh. you just call Thatcher and say, what game should I recommend? Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. Mystery yeah. solved. Well, we, can, we can invite people to try them. And, and, and my comment son? in the link below. We could. Which ones they liked and yeah. which ones they did. Yeah, anything, anything to save this premise. But I thought, well, I thought we were all going to play. <laughs> uh, play one together. Well, maybe one day, but that would be, that would be a difficult, that, that would be like, I don't know how. You can like hard. talk in a show. So let's, let's save the gameplay for like episode 12, maybe. Okay, now Louise. Yes. You recommended Jigsaw's Gold. Okay, so here's the thing. If you're online with a bunch of boomers, which I am, uh, the boomers are all talking about how all the puzzles are sold out of all the stores. Well, you don't need to buy a physical puzzle anymore, people. You can go to jigsawsgalore.com, and you can play puzzles on your computer. You, limitless, limitless puzzles. And I highly recommend jigsaws galore in fact i got a personal email from the guy mr jigsaws eddie, eddie jig and he offered all of us homebound folks a free game a free puzzle pack so it's not just one puzzle you get a pack of puzzles and they each come with like 20 puzzles and it's it's very soothing you can listen to a podcast while you do the puzzle and that's kind of like what i do so I recommend that. And then also for the casual gamer in your family, I recommend Big Fish Games. Anyone been there? Juliana, no? No. Games. This is full of what I call lady games. What's a lady game? Well, a lady game is a game that doesn't terrify a lady. So there's lots of solitaire and hidden objects. Something yes. I can play while I do my nails. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's quite uh, soothing. It really does take your mind off of, uh, it just kind of like puts you in, in sort of a Zen place. It's like meditation. I really need to say that. Really? If you, if you get into a game, and I'm sure it's the same for Thatcher or for anyone who's really into gaming. I, I don't know if they've measured our brainwaves when we're playing a game, but it takes you into sort of a meditative state where when you put down the game, you look around and you can't believe that life is still here. Like, I, oh. may, I will concur with that because my go-to is not online, but it could be played online, which is called crossword puzzles. Okay, which, good example. And you, you can do that online, but I do it. I have a bunch of them stored up from, from before this mess started, which I yeah. do. But I, but I experience the exact same thing when I'm doing them. I go into, it's like going into another universe. I find it calming, relaxing, and apparently it's strengthening my mind while I'm doing it. Well, so I mean, they, uh, to, to jut in, they use Tetris to um, treat soldiers with PTSD um, back oh, in the day. Tetris is the nectar of the gods. Yeah, yeah, because right. it, it, it puts you in this thing called flow, where it's like the equal, it's the, it's the perfect place between challenge and reward, and it, it's ah. supposed to get your mind in a very calm place. So they, they actually do it to treat stress. They've actually put it into a liquid form now, which you can inject. It's called Tetris cycling. <laughs> yeah, I learned an interesting <laughs> fact. Um, so I play a game called Cooking Fever on my phone. Okay. And when I play it a lot, like in a certain day, if I play it a lot, I'll be seeing it as I'm falling asleep. 
Like as oh, I'm yeah. in that space between awake and asleep, I'll right. see myself like playing that game. And I learned that there's actually a name for that, which is the Tetris effect. Right, you see the pieces. And I, what I love about giving that to uh, combat veterans is that in combat, you're blowing stuff up and in Tetris, you're fitting things together. And I think that mm -hmm. that's healing in a way because you, you, you have to make things fit. You have to make things work. And uh, I, I had a joke about Tetris in my, in my act, just about like a, how a lot of war games are about killing. And, and then the, the reason that women like, like Tetris is because instead of destroying things, you're, you're fitting things together. And then in my joke, and Bill knows my act quite well, in my joke, I, I would say, and you're all, and ladies, we're always waiting for that one long piece, right? But it never comes when we need it. It comes after we've already made other plans with the other pieces. For the folks at home, she's doing a metaphor. <laughs> well, and we should tell the story that, but 25 years ago, when you would play Tetris in the office and get a high score. And I would sneak into your office after you had left because I worked the night shift. Oh, he I would did. sneak in and I would play from like 11 p.m. until 4 a.m. until I beat her score. And then so she would walk in and her score would be beat. She'd be number two on the list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we ever built uh, a company. We built, <laughs> no, got anything and I built from your radio networks, but I was always playing Tetris and Tim Kelly was always playing solitaire. And we had this, that kind of like, um, what do you put on the windows to keep it from being reflective or to be, keep it from getting curtains. too hot? No, not yeah. curtains, but like a, anyway, <laughs> it's a coating that goes inside the windows and at night they kind of become mirrors. And uh, we would go by Tim's office and he would, he would act like he what, you know, was working, but you could see the reflection of him That's turning solitaire into another screen very quickly. <laughs> Mirror curtains. Yeah, we caught him. But maybe these things, you know, and these things are, I think it's helpful. I think it rejuvenates your mind. And it's not like you're sitting there staring at a TV. You're actually doing some sort of cause and effect relationship with, uh, with the screen, which maybe does build brain cells. Speaking of relationships, I thought of something this week that couples that are stuck during quarantine during this period and are going at each other to the point of possible violence, the term is Quarantina Turner. Wow. Wow. Did not that know that. Really good. You had to think hard and long. About not that. at all. That came <laughs> very all right. quickly Bill, and I'm ashamed. Bill, can you give us an update on what's going on in Nashville and in country music? Well, uh, in Nashville, things have gotten a little personal. We lost uh, opera member Joe Diffie. Um, mm. And uh, John Prine is currently in oh, stable yes, condition, but he's on a ventilator. So a lot of prayers going out for that. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of hitting a little bit close to home. We're continuing the Saturday night Opry shows with just one or two people. Um, uh, I can't announce who's on this Saturday, but it's almost as cool as Vince Gill and his family from last week. Garth? So uh, I can't say. Garth? Could be. Garth? I'm just going to keep saying Garth until he finally <laughs> some sort of. Uh, they've got, um, P P PBS has been running the Garth Brooks. Uh, he got the uh, Library of Congress uh, or right. the Gershwin the Gershwin Prize for Music, youngest right. person ever to receive it. It's been running on PBS. Yeah, so that's so cool. And then, um, if you are interested in catching some live shows on a daily basis, these are all virtual concerts that you can go to the artists. Um, Facebook page or Instagram to catch. Melissa Etheridge has one every day at 5 p.m. Central on her Facebook. You just have to come, come to, you have to come to her window to see it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's where everyone's coming right now because no one can come to <laughs> Steve, Steve Warner has a concert every Wednesday on his Facebook account at 7 p.m. Uh, Luke, Lucas Nelson, Willie Nelson's son, Ooh, uh, plays every Willie Nelson's son? Yes, yeah, he's oh, he's amazing. Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, huh. 8 p.m. Central on his Instagram account. Matt Stell, Lindsay L., Jameson Rogers, and Hardy play every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central on Instagram. So, uh, and Carly Pierce has one coming up. Um, let's see. That would be, oh, that was already today. Wow. Man, these, it's, it's, a, it's incredible, the amount of concerts. Mark Will, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Chapman um, Whiskey's Jam, streaming, Chris right? Bandy. Yeah, 
Tyler Rich, Josh Abbott Band, The Cadillac Three, Temecula Road, Striking Matches, John King, Jordan Davis, uh, Brandy Clark, Dylan Carmichael, Abby Anderson. It's just endless. Where can people go to find a central location to choose to choose what they? I'm like? trying to find an easy link for it, but we can definitely post it um, in the link for this. It's uh, the link it, that you sent in the chat, right, Bill? Yes, but it's a long link, it's and a, I was trying to find link. a. Yeah, I was trying to find a simple uh, way to find it on Opry.com. But, uh, so tell us what you and, and the Opry have decided to do uh, to create original programming. Well, a lot of the artists that I talk to um, are struggling to stay connected with fans. So what we're doing is we're creating a show that basically is taking all of their video blogs and um, Instagrams and TikToks and, and we're interviewing them at home and, and they're sharing how they're coping with everything that's going on, having to live at home as often as they are right now, not being able to have concerts and being on the road, being with their family and how they're staying sane. And, uh, and we're going to turn that into a 30 minute episode, uh, a show called at home. Um, but again, the, the challenge is we can't go film them. We can't send crews. We can't do things with them. So we're utilizing technology such as this and trying to be innovative in terms of how do we create programming and keep feeding the network and keeping the artists uh, connected with their fans and fan. We, we may even try to do some uh, things like this where fans can uh, Zoom with an artist or two and ask questions and meet oh, people wonderful. and stuff like that. Well, it's yeah, critical so that you teach them how to mute the camera before going to the bathroom. <laughs> 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 Learning curve. So anyway, I thought so you would get, get great echo in the bathroom for a country. Yeah, well, that that's, is true. well, that's true. Good reverb. So yeah, yeah. that's what's going on. We're, we're trying to keep up and trying to adjust. And um, as they say, if you, if you, you've got to evolve to stay relevant, and that's what we're trying to do. So a country song about today's episode could be Stand By Your Stand. <laughs> Stand By Your Stand. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. All right, so Juliana is here with us straight, straight from the, 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 the stand verse. Is there a word? All right, so we need to know, Juliana, first of all, is stand a noun, a verb, an adjective, all of the above? All of the above. So it's a noun in the sense that you can be a stan. Okay. Um, I'm a insert, whatever, like band, um, artist, TV show. Like, I mean, the people who I follow, they'd be like, I'm a high school musical, the musical, the series, stan. Is there is there a nickname for that? Because that's the longest it's, TV show. <laughs> H it's H S M T M T S. Oh, that rolls off the top. It's still no, unwieldy. I'll, no, I'll never yeah, forget. No. It. <laughs> but you're also. I, know. I mean, when I when I see it typed out, because I guess people don't really say it out loud since it's just Twitter. I just like see it as like. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I and just like also, that's what it kind of goes through my mind. And you're a Broadway fan so, as well, right? So I guess. I'm not really, I just follow all the accounts, so I kind of know what's going on. And I don't really interact with them. They're scary and mean. I mean, we can get into, like, the drama that goes on later. But I actually started to, like, figure out what Stan Twitter was, what all of that was. Um, because when I was in eighth grade, I wanted so badly to just, like, be part of, I guess, like, the Broadway stan community so i made an account and everything and tried to talk to people but it was so clicky um but i don't know why i just felt super attached to these random accounts so i just followed all of them mm -hmm. and then i guess as my interests shift i mean i still like follow all the broadway people but um i started following other accounts so i guess that's how that's how i i know what i know but in terms of interacting um with the other accounts. I don't really do that. I kind of like to oversee things. It's, it's kind of interesting. And I guess that's why I can talk about it because I don't feel super biased towards, um, I guess, what goes on. Um, you have less personal investment because you're sort of observing. People have really strong opinions. Yeah. So before we move forward, explain to everybody what, what Stan Twitter is and how it works and how you are either a member of the group or someone who just follows the accounts, are the accounts the names of real people or are the accounts a fictionalized person or 
Start at the beginning. Okay. So I guess there's like normal Twitter, you know, people's personal accounts. And then there's Stan Twitter, which is <laughs> this whole different thing that's so scary. But um, the other guys are called locals. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, people's, I guess, it, they used to be like IRLs because back in the day in like 2014, 15, I actually had a Instagram. I had an Instagram fan page for Taylor Swift. So that's kind of totally different. But people would call them IRLs. Like Meaning in real life. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, my IRL did this. Um, now they're called locals on Stan Twitter. So that's the people who. Okay, so that's not- in real life. That's your real identity? Um, no, it's like the people you know in real life life so oh, let's say you're okay yeah, yeah so like you'll be talking to your stan friends and you'll be like oh um my local said this to me <laughs> or like oh, you're acting like such a local if you're not using like all the stan twitter lingo i guess that's but, how, that's how gay, gay people used to call regular people breeders so it's is like local this- <laughs> like another word for normie or it's like about a, your relationship with it's, it's about your relationship. So if you just, anyone you know in real life okay. or who doesn't have a Stan account or who is not a Stan is a local. Okay. okay so yeah. You guys, so, all of your jargon and all of your inside cultural uh, euphemisms and you understand each other. Right, right. Yeah. And then everyone else is a local. Oh, they don't understand. They're a local. Okay. Yeah. So, are you from, are you familiar with all the all the, all the terminology? There's a whole language that stands. I I pretty much am. Um, it's kind of funny because since I, I'm not really tweeting anything, I just like look at everyone else's. I I still see what everyone says and the way people say things, which is so funny to me that I'll try to talk like that in real life to my friends. I, the local Appar- apparently a lot I of it am. i am a local but i'll start like talking like that and they'll be like what what are you even saying right a lot so- of the a lot of the stan jargon apparently has been borrowed from sort of black street culture apparently yeah that's actually well, well internet culture in general arguably has yeah. Borrowed yeah a lot from yeah mm-hmm. from um like gay gay men right like a lot of like drag um, yeah Culture has influenced, like, how people talk on the internet. Yeah, it's cutting yeah. edge. Like, cutting edge creativity, for sure, that everybody models. Now, uh, can you, Giuliani, I asked you to, to uh, pick out a, uh, a reading for us, for the class yes. to enjoy, and to stand beside your desk. Now, uh, <laughs> what you enjoy is that Will this be on write, the final? <laughs> people write fan fiction, and so they, they use the characters that everyone, just, so for you, it's High School Musical, the musical, the series, whatever, you know, the whole title. For you, it's that. So it's it's the people that are in there, and I've watched five or six episodes, but I do not remember their names. I, I assume they have them. <laughs> but uh, so they write about those characters, and it's kind of like a love triangle. I mean, it's a classic love triangle. There's a girl named Minnie, I, I think, yes, and then yeah. she, she was with one boy, and then he wanted to go on a break, so she started dating another boy at camp, and then she came back, and they found out they're going to be performing the high school musical musical at their high school because it's the high school that the movie was filmed at in in utah yeah do I have this part correct yes as rachel would say do i have anything wrong headed previously on uh so if you write about those characters then you don't have to do any of that kind of exposition everyone understands the characters and then a lot of people will will ship different people meaning like oh i'd like to see these two get together and i'd like to see these two yeah. get together and then you can you can write out your fantasy of you what you would like to have happen with the characters, and you find it all very addicting. Yeah, so a lot of the times it can follow the same storyline, and then other times it'll be completely different. I, like, it's kind of funny because sometimes in these stories, they'll just change the characters so much that they're different ages, they live in different places, they have, like, different histories, so, like, they just have the same names in some of them. Um, and some of them they are pretty similar, though. And then this so is qu- also <laughs> so. The, so question that so the so the stands are taking the characters that exist on the show and then creating their own version of it and their own fantasy world. Yes, based, yes. based on it. And that's yes. the way or AU. 
Alternate. AU, yeah. AU, um, I didn't know what AU was at first. I started reading them. I'm like, oh, I really like these AUs. I'm like, what is an AU? Ask, <laughs> any, ask, ask any New Yorker. AU! Hey, so, so, Juliana, they'll be one of the characters, and then they'll tell the story in the first person? Um, normally, it's in... So, it's in narration. So, it's third person, but a lot of the times, they're social media AUs, so... It'll do it through, like, making, you know, the characters' profiles on social media and then text messages between characters. Oh. Um, okay. If I were to show something on my phone. All right, so are you ready to read, read to us? Yeah, so this one, nope. um, this one has a prologue, um, so, and it's all written, so I'll read that so that it's easier than doing a social media one. So, um, it's in a thread on Twitter, so... This one's called Saturn, Arini AU, which Arini is just the ship name between two of the characters. Okay, and then this also has nothing to do with the show, so it's okay. But which not any spoilers? Nini and Ricky. So that ship name, the original couple. Okay, got it. Kind of yeah, the couple in the show. Yeah. Okay. So it's called Saturn. One year after Nini's death, Ricky reflects on their love and all the memories they made, based on the song Saturn by Sleeping Out Last. Okay, notes. In all, all in their senior year at this point, mentions of death will switch between past and present, shipping fictional characters, not actors. That's a common thing. Prologue. He remembers exactly where he was when he got the news. Third chair to the left on the right side of his kitchen table, doing his physics homework. His dad walked in with tears on his face and said they needed to talk. He didn't know what it could be, his mom had already left. What could be worse? Mike Bowen watched as his son broke into pieces in front of him, a drunk driver. Who would drink at 3 p.m.? He had sent him a text 30 minutes earlier. Leaving soon. I love you, Bubba. That was, that was it. The last text Nina Salazar Roberts had ever, ever sent to the love of her life, Richard Bowen. That's How is that not a country yeah, song? Yeah, a lot of them aren't that sad. That one's pretty sad. And then it goes on. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's like, but it's like. Oh, there she is. There's so it's a thread. So like social media posts, right? And this is all made by the author of the. So it's extremely creative. Yeah. So there's written portions and then they'll show like text message exchanges it's fun to read as well yeah no they, they really are and it doesn't feel like you're doing heavy reading and they can be really addictive so it's also not just it, um with high school musical the musical the series I mean I guess just since this is funny because um I started watching the show and it's not like I was really obsessed I just I just liked it I guess and a lot of the accounts I was currently following on Twitter we're posting about it. So, I mean, when you like click on an account and you get sucked in a rabbit hole and you find all the AUs. So at this point, I'm so much more invested in this series than I ever thought I would be, than I wow. wanted to be. Right. Juliana, question for you. So besides it just being diehard fans and some of it being a very, uh, uh, I guess what you would call a toxic culture, which we read a lot about, there's a lot of creativity in it. And is, do, you think, yeah. do you think some of that creativity is misplaced or do you think it will trigger those people creating other things that aren't just uh, a reflection and an echo of something that already exists? I think it's a lot of both. So um, I guess where it could be misplaced is in, so before the, the AU actually starts, um, I read this, but there's, there's like a note section and a lot of um, the writers of these need to say, shipping characters, not actors, because it's, it's become a thing where people will, like, want the actors to be together. Oh, okay. Um, that's, and also that's where a lot of, like, the drama within the stands kind of, kind of forms, but, it, like, it can be a, touch, a touchy subject on what people write about. Underage drinking happens in a lot of these, um, like, how, I guess, how far you go. Um, yeah, but... A lot of the time, it really, a lot of these AUs inspire other people 
to write their own. It's really cool to just see what people write. And a lot of them are super well written. A lot of them are not. Um, right. But it's just really interesting. Well, writing, what, what, writing what do so, you, if you're sorry. writing, uh, you're getting better at writing. So we're going to cut yeah. to the drama really, really quickly because it is teenagers yeah. that are consuming this and, and, and uh, creating yeah. it. So teenagers are going to be teenagers. And when they're not face-to-face, they can often be even more cruel than when they are face-to-face, which is cruel enough, correct? Yeah. So... It's, yeah, that, that was my question, is where does the controversy and the toxicity... Yeah, yeah where does it go toxic? Why, how does it go from creative to turning on each other? Oh, okay. So... A lot of these how, do, how do artists get involved where they're, like, leaving so, social media just because there's... get involved. So yeah. a lot of it stems from the I guess the actors or the artists um in this fandom I guess it's um the actress who plays Nini um Olivia Rodrigo and then the actor who plays Ricky who is Joshua Bassett so I mean a lot of people on the internet think that either like they should date or they they are dating and then um and then there's this whole thing on online on Twitter, which I mean, like it's, I guess it's kind of obvious that like you shouldn't ship characters and actor, like actors with each other. It's just kind of like, these are real people and like, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, A lot of people on Twitter do, and they're kind of obvious about it. So that's kind of where they start getting these accounts who like want them to be together. Joe Livia, which is like the real actor's um, ship name, even though they're not dating that we know of. Um, these other accounts will be like, oh, you're being a Joe Livia and start like attacking them, which is, they can do it in really um, mean ways. Um, and at this point now, they have a lot of time on their hands. Okay. So give um, us an example it can of what's get to be a lot. Hmm? Give us an example of what's been going on. Okay. So peop- someone will make a comment. Um, let's say like, oh, they're the cutest best friends ever. And then um, they'll get quoted on Twitter by another account. Still, so this is like all within Stan Twitter in this fandom. The, getting called out. Um, it can get to the point where, um, and I saw this a few nights ago, that people will make threads on Twitter exposing um, people. So this one was like exposing the Jolivias of Twitter. And you just scroll through and you see all these screenshots of um, private messages that people sent to each other and on their private accounts. Um, And people not being very nice. I can um read something it's just it's kind of scary which is why at this point i'm glad that i'm not really interacting with anyone if if someone had privately texted you that they wished certain actors were a couple they're getting busted for that yes yes yeah my mother would have been in big trouble well, you know, this is very, th- this is no different than kind of grade school gossip and stuff that went mm-hmm. on amongst kids, except there's a, pub- there's a public forum for it, and then it becomes exponential. Exactly, I mean, and someone even said on Twitter, um, oh, this is a, someone's tweet that I just pulled up. Okay. So nobody informed me that Twitter is an elementary school with clicks and queen bees that you're supposed to worship. So yep. someone tweeted exactly that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it, it's... It's uh, uh, to, to to flash back to something that yeah. Louise and I talked about a little bit, but uh, th- this article that I read about you know fandom and about kind of Beatlemania, uh, you know th- that whole thing, uh, uh, which actually started like a hundred years earlier, started in the eighteen forties. Uh, 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 the, p- the famous pianist List, somebody, a, a poet named uh, uh, the hell is the Heinrich Heine, in eighteen forty four came up with the name List Listomania. And it was the first time girls had ever screamed in a concert because he was so good looking and so dynamic. And then Frank Sinatra, a hundred years later, the same kind of, all those things happened, but in public with no, no ability for those people to interact or talk about it. 
And then when Beatlemania happened, it happened with TV and with film for the first time. So kids saw how other kids were acting. So they knew that when they went to see them, they thought they were supposed to act like that. But again, it was in public, but without the ability to do what kids are doing now, suddenly you throw the internet into it. They're doing all of that and talking about it. And, you know, so it, it's, again, it's kind of the same little thing that started small. It existed before, but without the outlet and exposure for it. Yeah, right. but it's we had, crazy. We had the magazines, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. So these kids are their own magazines. They, they don't so, need Tiger, Tiger Beat to see the, the, the you know, the, uh, depth, the, yeah. the dirt. And a lot of these accounts, I guess, are, are big for fan accounts, I think. Um, some of the big ones uh, have around... 6,000, 7,000, sometimes 8,000 followers. And these are some of the accounts that are also getting called out, which is crazy. Like I just, I follow a bunch of accounts because if I'm going to be completely honest, yes, I'm entertained by the AUs, but to see the drama going on, I mean, I hate to say that it's just entertaining for me, but it's, it's just interesting. That, so that's I what I was going to say. Why do you, what do you get out of it? Why do you enjoy it so much? So I was thinking about this and I guess just like it's interesting for me to examine human behavior and how people act differently online versus in person. Like I, I can't imagine anyone um, acting like acting like how they do on Twitter to people's faces. It's it's so weird. Like even I know passive aggressive people, and I know people um, who probably would do those things online, but. I just can't think of a situation where this would actually happen in real life. So I just, I just find it really interesting. But yeah, now, are they anon they're they're anonymous, anonymous, right? So they actually, so, okay. So the usernames have something to do with um, what their account is about. So something to do with the show, um, the actors, but their display names um, are just their normal names and they'll post pictures of themselves. Hmm. So, I guess they're not completely anonymous, but they definitely don't think that I'm, you know, coming on here talking about them, or they don't think that um, people in their real life are going to find them. Okay, so it, it, there's a comfort of a screen that, that gives yeah, them this, sure. this kind of like cloak of invisibility where they feel like, you know, whatever their id is can come out and express itself at any time they feel any kind of like righteous indignation about something that it that their words will never come back around that the that the law of physics that applies to emotional energy doesn't apply here and when in fact it does so what do you see in terms of there being repercussions for the way they behave um so repercussions for the way they behave um i, I guess there's always that fear of knowing that someone's going to call you out, like, that's super scary to me. I don't even think, like, I'd do anything super wrong. And a lot of these people don't either, but it's just really scary. What, happened, that, what happens if somebody does call them out? I mean, you can't find them. I mean, what are you going to I mean, the person... So I guess it's just kind of like, you get to be friends, um, or they, I don't know, but I'm assuming that they get to be friends with these people. Or I know they do. They have these group chats, and, you know, they, like, FaceTime with each other and meet up in real life. Oh, okay. and knowing that these people like who could be your friends could turn on you or know the like truth about you could suck people say like oh i'm deactivating i can't um i can't handle any of this anymore so i guess it really like it hits hard and it it is personal at a certain point so, I mean, so, don't you think that it keeps you at an elevated state of agitation that isn't in very healthy or is, oh, yeah, that, for sure. or is there a is there a rush to that? Hmm. I think I definitely think that what like your Twitter life could affect your your real life. Even if you don't know any of these people in real life and you just have this, you know, you know all these different people, you could still be going throughout your day and thinking about that. I know for me personally, back to my my Taylor Swift fan page days in like fifth grade or something. Um it it would affect me. I remember I got hacked. Um, my account got hacked, and ten year old me was freaking out. I was so scared, and it would like cause me so much stress in my normal life. So I can't even imagine 
when you're older and you get to have these like deeper relationships with these people who you meet online with about um, something that you love um, and all that drama going on, I can't imagine how that would affect you. Well, have you met any of your Stan friends in real life or do you know them in real life or have you? So that like they know each other and um, if they live near each other, they'll meet up um, sometimes. Um, yeah, I just, cause I, I don't really like have any, none of them are like my friends. Cause just cause I follow them. They don't really right. know who I am. So it's, it's, but when um, you talk about a friend, you talk about relationships. It's, it's hard for me to understand that this is a relationship event. It's just dialogue. It really is yeah. dialogue. And, uh, but there's like, such a strong emotional basis and yeah still, right. and there's a and a big mutual interest common yeah. interest yeah. Yeah. right but the anonymity of it just kind of separates you to my way of thinking from the reality of it that, that they yeah, don't no, I definitely, no i agree with that which is why like it's always been kind of weird for me to like People are so close with their internet friends, which is crazy. I mean, a lot of them do, I think, at a certain point, FaceTime with each other. Um, so I guess at a certain point, it can go beyond that, just like dialogue and the and the Twitter replies. But it is it is crazy how that can how that can um, I guess affect affect you so much if you're just communicating through tweets. They're okay, also I mean, they're also operating uh, like in a, in a universe that doesn't have uh, the perspective we have about life and about relationships and logic. It's it's landed and anchored in that teenage and twenty something time span where those parameters don't exist. So it's got its own its own laws and its own spine. Well, it speaks to the the fact that you know, like if if I email somebody or I send somebody uh, a text. And we just keep communicating through uh, written words. You can take it a thousand different ways, and yeah. often it's misinterpreted, or it and it become and drama comes from the fact that you're not really able to have a connection over over yeah. punctuation. And, yeah, and when, when I see my daughters under. talking to people, and it becomes and a lot of times it's like I think it's just a complete misunderstanding. I think you read it wrong, you know. And yeah, that speaks. This this isn't really a relationship. It's a Kind of like Jamie was saying, it's the relationship is there's well, more from to my it. experience <laughs> as a teenage stan as I was like 20 years ago. Um, when you bond over something where the emotions run so high and deep, it could feel more real than the real world around you, than the relationship, oh, yeah, you have yeah with definitely, parents, definitely. Than, you know, what's going on in school or whatever. Because this it feels like this is what's important, this is like what makes me feel something. And when you, when you create that bond and you like share that um, you like sense in somebody else, something that you're like, that you feel and no one else gets that about they, you. They understand you and no one else does. Yeah. It's like an yeah. extension for me. It's an extension of a teenage bedroom wall where you, you put up everything on your walls that is meaningful to you. And it, it's sort of like if somebody came in and rearranged your wall or took something down, it, it I think it just feels like, such an infringement on how you've chosen to brand yourself that, it, that it's threatening the, the very essence of you. And that's why they take it so personally. But Dina, you yeah. found an interesting New Yorker article about Stan culture. Did you want to talk about that for a moment? Um, yeah, I actually read this when it came out originally. And um, it sort of, it's something that I've been kind of like, my mind will like come back to this every once in a while because there's a lot of information in here and, you know, it goes back. It also talks about listomania and about um, like Star Trek fans, how like sci-fi fans have always been sort of like the pioneers of stan culture. Hmm. Um, and so just kind of how like identity, like because popular, basically like because popular culture um, has become such a big part of our lives. It's popular. But let me just play OK Boomer here for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, like here we go. Here we go. Because, to, because of the anonymity, 
uh, there's no real culpability. Uh, in, that's what I was asking about. In, yeah, these, in these relationships, so to speak. And uh, I'm going to be an okay boomer by saying I think a lot of it has to do with the age of the fans. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Think about it this way. You're, in your childhood, there's things, that, you know, you want to be – the things you, you want to make your own. You don't want it to be mom and dad's. You don't want it to be your big brothers or your big sister. You want it just to be yours. Right. And this can right. just be yours. And you can say anything you want to anybody you want. And you can get out all those frustrations and all that toxic, toxicity mm-hmm. that we we're talking about uh, that maybe is a residual from your childhood. And, you know, you're just kind of getting it out. You're, 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 yeah, definitely. You, a lot of yeah, people, no, that, no, good, good <laughs> point. There's, 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 two, there's two types of stands from what I from what I'm seeing and what I'm reading in this article, Dina. There's stands like Juliana who like a certain genre or a certain show, and then there's stands of a specific person, mm-hmm. and they feel like their appointed duty is to to defend right. that person and to and, and and to walk into battle to defend that right. person's honor, like dueling. In the yeah. days of so, I mean, we so, haven't really been talking about that side of the set because we're talking a lot today about like the fan fiction community, right? And that's a little bit different. Um, and they have like their own rules, you know, kind of as Juliana alluded to. No um, stabbing. What you're you're wondering if, about, if, if Haley has any of those ardent Haley fans that yeah. defend her in ways that are a little bit too much because it, it feels to me like they would follow the leadership like you know the, everything comes comes from from the top the mood and the tenor and so if if for example Nick, Nicki Minaj isn't telling people or Bernie isn't telling people stop doxing and don't do that that's not who we are it feels like they would follow the leadership and Haley is a really pure, pure rational kind creative empathetic person so Perhaps her fans are kinder than the the Nicki Minaj variety. I think I they like probably all think they are. And I've, I've, read, I've read some of her Twitter stand, and it's it's a lot of just uh, it's gushing, you know, as opposed to being necessarily like angry, angry or yeah. uh, so. There's really no cause to defend. I mean, she's got five hundred and ninety two thousand. Twitter followers or something, or 1.9 million or something like that. It's just, it's crazy the people that that are out there that do choose to interact. But I, I think she kind of likes it. She kind of checks up on it every once in a while to see what's but going what on. They, the question is, like, in the article, they somebody mentions something about Nicki Minaj's new music and says something, like, aspirational right. about how maybe she could be writing some more mature lyrics. Right. And then she just gets attacked. So oh yeah, I read it. Yeah, I read that. If someone, yeah. if somebody said something negative about Haley, I don't think Haley would want that person to be attacked. I think she would guide them in terms of how how you encounter something that you don't agree with. Right. She uh, actually was attacked. Um, Taylor Swift was attacked for saying something. Uh, oh, I know what it was. Um, Lana, God. Lana Del Rey had a, a record that. Uh, had something to do with uh, a woman getting drunk, and because she got drunk, she uh, acquiesced to her lesbian leanings. And Haley said, people don't have to get drunk to, you know, be cognizant of, of who they are and to, to like. express uh, what, who they like. And And so there was this big flare-up that Haley was attacking Lana Del Rey. And then uh, and then on Twitter, stand or on Twitter, maybe it was just um, Taylor Swift jumped in and said, "Don't attack Haley. She can say anything she wants, and maybe she has a good point. And leave her alone." And there was this whole big thing that went on. This was a about a year and a half ago. I think Taylor Swift is a really good role model in terms of uh, being respectful and being being kind and not overreacting. Like, I mean, I think you need to calm down as an entire video that with that message. Yeah, truly, she's a but, wonderful person. Yeah, she is and a lovely dancer. Great she, girl. She's such Great. a talent. That one. 
Mm. Uh, so I don't Thanks know if, you. Um, if this is like going too deep, but I kind of wanted to see if you guys had any thoughts on this. I was mulling this over after rereading this article again. I was kind of thinking about like the relationship of people who get stand to like actual power, right? And I'm kind of wondering like what you guys think about this. Like, so Louise brought up... Um, Bernie, and then there's like, so there's Bernie and there's Donald Trump, right? Arguably, those are the people that have like the most ardent like fans, if you're going to call it. Fake so, Stan, and, fake and Stan. Then me, and then there's me. And there's Joe. But okay. you never hear, and Juliana, I'd like to, I don't know if you have an opinion on this, you never hear people talk about, and maybe it's just me, but I never hear people talk about stands of those people because those people are like close to actual power. Nicole. I do hear people talking about Liz Warren stands. And I feel like that's because she's more removed from like that power. And it's sort of like, sorry about that. If that's for uh, me, I'm not here. <laughs> it's home. sort of like the that. stand community is, there's like a cultural kind of capital to the people that get stand, but maybe like not like real power. And that's what sort of stands are grasping for. Well, I, I also think it's very gendered too, right? Like yeah. stands is predominantly gay men and women and not necessarily oh. straight men, which are the base of, right. at least on Twitter, the base of a lot of the male candidates. So. Oh, okay. Interesting. That's yeah. interesting. I never really thought of, um, I guess, like the term stand in terms of power i didn't i didn't even know there were elizabeth warren stands i mean i guess it kind of makes sense but um no i definitely think that like now that i think about that that is true why like bernie stands or trump stands i, I think they they, they, they know, don't exist i guess i think they why don't use that why term. don't i have a stand i want a stand too i think they just simply don't use that term but i think the behavior is very similar they will pounce on anybody who disagrees with them. Right, yeah. I think I think it's more the it's the vernacular that people mm -hmm. it's who is considered a stand as gender. That's what I meant. Not like who actually stands, but who we who we who we, we, who, who we deem as stand. yeah, exactly. Grown ups so Juliana, call it a call it a base. Juliana exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Juliana, how would you um describe what's going on online during um this period of social distancing? How, how is it affecting online culture? Oh, people have so much time on their hands now. So, um, so definitely those AUs are getting updated more frequently. Um, people are just on their phones more so. Whoops. Oh, we lost Julian. We did everything we could, doctor. Where did she go? Just as she told us on her phone, she wasn't. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Illuminati she confirmed. She got Let's into to an alternate universe. Anymore. Here she comes. Here she's she, back. She's back. There you and go. I, and a better person. Oh for no! Her. I was. I guess mine it just went off. But um, you got stand. So okay. Um, I'm on my phone now. I think went to the tablet of my computer. But um, so oh yeah. So people have so much time on their hands now that um. I guess that's why we're seeing all these drama outbreaks. Like, um, like two nights ago, I think it was that I sent all those um, screenshots and screen recordings. People just really don't have anything better to do than to just find things to call people out for and to start to start um, drama like this, which it does happen. Um, at normal times, but I've been seeing it a lot more um, in the past few days like week week and a half too where people they're also, are they're also stressed out. they're they're, they're stressed yeah, everybody's nervous they're, and they're crazy that's and that's it. that's the, that's their outlet is it yeah. sometimes juliana is it difficult for you not to weigh in and say hey 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 uh, you know is it difficult to just be an observer no definitely it is <laughs> um, i really want to like say something but <laughs> I feel like um, people only interact with this, like, small circle of people who are, I, I guess, like, the ones getting called out or, like, 
group or their friends that they might be like, oh, this person has been watching the whole time. I can't believe that, which I think would be interesting for them because their accounts aren't private. It's, I guess it's open to anyone, but I wonder how they would feel right. if they knew that there's this, definitely you know, a like, certain lack of self-awareness, right? When it comes to the stand community. Yeah, definitely. Lack of self-awareness. And, and Juliana, what are some other interesting stands aside from High School Musical, the musical, the series? Okay, so the Broadway stands, which um, I think that the demographic is definitely different. I mean, it can be the same sort of demographic, but that's kind of what I, how I found my way into Stan Twitter. What they're doing now is something really interesting to me. Um, right now... I guess not now because all the Broadway shows are closed, but West Side Story on Broadway, the revival. Um, right. There, I think he's playing Bernardo, and um, this actor has, um, I, um, he has been accused of sexual assault when he was in the New York City Ballet. And then this was like back in September 2018, and even, um, this was known information before he was cast in West Side Story around a year later. And um, the the girl who was also in um, the New York City Ballet came forward. And since then, um, it's not even just Broadway stands, um, just people who, I guess, know what's going on with, um, with the Broadway community. But um, they... They started a movement to um, to get him out of the show, and it's it's really empowering. Actually, um, back when all the shows were running, almost every night people would um, go out in front of the theater and protest, which I think is really really great. Um, and that started on Broadway Stan Twitter. Oh, I yeah. see. It, they were yeah. Now, was, there, was, there, was, was, he, was he acquitted? Was he convicted? What happened? He was accused. Or was it a rumor? Yeah. Um, Might have been a stand. So, so I think there were receipts, which I guess is a, they're like, I don't know what stand Twitter people say for like evidence, but um, uh, something with sh sharing photos, I'm not really completely sure what exactly happened, but he was kicked off of the New York City Ballet. And I think with the main uh, argument that um, the, like, I guess the Broadway stand Twitter had was like, he was kicked off of New York City Ballet. Why, are, why is Broadway kind of, why, like, why are they letting him on Broadway? This sends a really bad message to um, any victim of sexual assault. Um, that if I, if I remember, if I remember the story, he shared a picture of his girlfriend with another dancer, mm. and that's what started. And his girlfriend actually defended him and said, "It's going too far. He's I'm fine with it. It should be okay." And it erupted into this whole back and forth, and yeah, and, yeah. So it's it's kind of a mob mentality in Kangaroo Court. I mean, truly, it's, truly, it is. You know. Right, but we don't we don't know enough of the details to make a judgment. But I like they did, they didn't either. I'm going to yeah. go tweet about it right now. But Juliana is saying that a lot a lot of stand Broadway stand uh, people or Broadway stands are, are are women, correct? Um, yeah. Um, I I mean I'd say what's also interesting um, is that I think a lot of them are a lot older so yeah a lot of them are women yeah i'd say mostly women actually but and did this emerge what i find the, the me too movement kind of inspired them that they, yeah they no, have definitely. a zero tolerance approach yeah for sure um i guess it's like yeah no it's very it's very much like part of the the me too movement um you know especially with all the the protests that they're doing outside the theater mm -hmm. um I, and also, so a lot of those stands are older. Um, I guess the younger side is in college. Um, there are some people who, like, are 
in their 20s or 30s with um, with jobs. I know of at least one of them who's an elementary school teacher who's, I don't know, it's just like in their bios on Twitter. They're like, like elementary school teacher or like a lot of them are in college too. So um, I guess it comes with the maturity is just yeah. less drama. What also is interesting is that um, a lot of the people who I used to follow uh, two or three, three years ago from Broadway stand Twitter when there was a lot of drama. And I guess these are the same people who, who are in college now, but they were in high school and a lot of them ended up leaving Stan Twitter. They just couldn't handle it. It wasn't for them anymore. Right. So well, I think, yeah, we do, we do outgrow certain things that we're passionate yeah. about. You always have a love for it in your heart, but you just move on and your life becomes busier with, with other uh, pursuits. With life. With real with life. life. Well, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's good practice okay. for life to learn how to interact. Yeah, no, good point, good point. But I'm, I'm going to move on to um, what's Twitter trending because we have to uh, move towards the end of the show. Twitter. And, no! Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Twitter? What's Twitter trending is I'm doing fine because. And uh, we're, we just have one tweet, and I love it. We have this tweet from Beth Monster. She oh, tweeted, that's my favorite. Right. She tweets, I'm doing fine because of this potato boss. It's a retweet from Rach, who writes, my boss turned herself into a potato during this Microsoft Teams meeting, and she can't figure out how to turn the setting off, so she was just stuck like this during the entire meeting. <laughs> and I think that's going to make all of us smile for at least the next 48 hours. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever had Twitter envy, is that piece. <laughs> <laughs> We're chipping away at Danny. Yeah, we're getting yeah, there. Right. I want to thank you, Juliana Pastrell, for being our wonderful and maybe even one of our youngest guests. Thank Whoa. You. Oh, thank oh. you. And, 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 and she's running out of cousins, so this is... I am know. not. <laughs> I, no, no. I am no more <laughs> You have no idea. I, I know. I can't wait. You would be booked through the end of this entire quarantine. With all of my the whole stuff is coming. Thank you to Juliana Pastrell. Our, our panel is Danny Mann, Jamie Elcroft, and Bill Filipiak. Our producer is Dina Friedman. Our tech team is Thomas Hubble and Lane McFadden. Our sound mixer is John Maddox. Our webmaster is Bill Filipiak. I'm Louise Palanker. We are Things I Found Online. Be safe, be well, be kind, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.